Hey everyone, I think I'm in the right group. <laughs> hey, mom to mompreneurs. It's me, Alna from twinsmommy.com. All right, so let me know if you're here and let me check and see if you can have comments. All right, I'm gonna put them right here. Okay, so I'm gonna be talking about Pinterest marketing for bloggers, okay, if you're brand new to Pinterest and all that, and if you're a new blogger. I'll talk about some of the questions that were dropped in the thread. And if you're here and you have a burning Pinterest question, just post them here and hopefully I can see them. I don't know. We'll see. Okay. Cause it's been a while since I've used, um, Ecamm, which is this video thing. All right. Okay. So, uh, give me a thumbs up, say hi, do something. So I know that I can see your comments and let's get to it. There are some questions in the thread here. Let me, I just, for some reason, I can't access Pinterest on my phone. I just, I'm afraid to put the app on or something. I don't know what it is, but I hope everyone's doing good. Um, I've been super busy, um, but I thought I can jump in right now. <clears throat> Excuse me. There was one question here. Um, okay, the last one by Anne Marie. Myths versus truths. There's no set strategy, but only the one that works for you debunk the myth. Um, I do want to talk a little bit about these, uh, about all the different types of strategies out there, all the different types of tips and what people are saying, you know, to use, um, only use Tailwind, only do manual pinning, only do this, only do that. And, you know, Anne-Marie is ultimately right, but you have to look at it from the bigger picture of um, through the eyes of Pinterest and their ultimate goal, right? Their ultimate goal is for people to stay and be on their platform and to pay. I mean, that's their goal. They need to make money, Right. Um, a while back, they were ranking high on Google, right, for um, DIY stuff, for anything. Their, Pinterest was always there at the top. But now um, Google took a, you know, hit Pinterest. Um, I think they're slowly gaining traction now, but they lost a lot of traffic. They lost a lot of viewership. So that's why they were relying heavily on uh, us, the creators, and giving us some tips to help, Right because ultimately it was to help Pinterest. So you need to think about that, that this is just a business and they're doing us a favor for giving us the, the gracious traffic that we get, any kind of traffic that we get. And there's gonna be some bloggers out there that are gonna hit the viral pins right away and other ones that are gonna be struggling constantly. And it all depends on many factors, on your topic that you're on, on Pinterest, um, on the type of pins that you're creating, when you pin, how often, how engaged you're on that platform. So I want you to think about that when um, when Anne-Marie says that there's no set strategy. In my course, Ready, Set, Block for Traffic, I do have like four or five strategies for that purpose because I know that not every blogger is on the same um, journey as I am. There might be a blogger that just started. There might be a blogger that is been blogging for years. There might be a blogger that has a brand new Pinterest profile. There might be a blogger that doesn't want to rely on group boards. There might be a blogger that just wants to do manual pinning. I have a lot of different strategies in the course because I want to help everyone as possible because there is no set thing. I personally use Tailwind and manual, manual pinning. That's what I use. But the biggest things to remember with Pinterest is you need to be consistent. Okay. So when I say consistent, you can use a scheduler to schedule your, your pins consistently. If you decide to only pin 10 times a day, then pin 10 times a day consistently, okay? If you decide to pin 100 times a day, then pin consistently 100 times a day. Pinterest has already stated they do not care how often you pin as long as you do it consistently, all right? So remember that. Now, for me, my manual strategy hasn't been consistent, and because of that, Yes, my impressions have gone down, um, but I'm, I was just looking at, in all, all, in all honesty, all of December and most of January, I have not even been on Pinterest. It was just recently that I started creating alternate pins and stuff, so I still don't see any comments, so hopefully I'm not going too fast, but so I'm just looking at what's happening with me not doing any manual stuff and just having Tailwind just do the automation for all of December and most of January. Um, I have had hand pain from doing graphics. <laughs> and so I can't even like use my mouth, my mouse. I'm getting better, but I'm very hesitant to use my mouse and creating graphics because um, it's a lot of clicking and moving. And yes, I do know that there are voice 
uh, dictation apps, but I'm not I'm not patient enough to 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 give them commands and and am not as creative that way. So um, I'm just going to take it slow. But um, so that's what I wanted to talk about with the 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 myths out there. Um, do know that you need to be consistent. So decide what you how often you can pin consistently and Pinterest wants to be wants you or at least people to be on their platform. So I personally believe that by me uploading my pins using tail, uh, Pinterest, by me engaging on my home feed, those are all metrics that Pinterest can see that I have an up to date profile. I am on their platform. I am an engaging with their pins. All right, that's that's my personal belief that I've seen. Um, it may not be the case for you. There are, like I said, there are bloggers that just set it and forget it and they're doing fine, right? Um, but there's going to be other bloggers out there that are still struggling. So you need to find what works. So um, I was for the longest time creating like three pins a week or sometimes even three pins a day. And that gave me a big boost in impressions and in click throughs. Um, but then I stopped, right? So again, Pinterest looked at me and said, oh, she's not consistent anymore. I'm not going to pump out her pins. I'm not going to show them as often. They're not going to get as engaged, right? So that's that was a penalty that I had to take, but I'm fine with that. I can, I can go back and start creating pins consistently and boost my impressions and boost my traffic. So if we look at one of my profiles that's the most stable is... Uh, Smart Mom Ideas, it's a parenting profile. So these are my 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 link, my click links that people have clicked on my link. So you can see it's like thousands. And so I have been consistently, like this profile has been consistent only because there have been a few pins that are now like the legacy pins, the pins that Pinterest deems. If you wanna know about breastfeeding, this, this or these are the pins that you're gonna learn about breastfeeding. If you want to learn about bullet journaling, those are the pins that you're going to learn about bullet journaling, right? Once Pinterest knows that your pin is the pin, I call it the legacy pin, then you don't have to worry so much about your profile. And that's what happened with Smart Mom Ideas. I don't have to pump out tons of pins. I don't have to be on this platform manually, right? I can just let it and almost set it and forget it. But I like Pinterest marketing. I like creating pins. So I will, um, I will do that. I will create those pins. Another thing also, I haven't been uploading content on Smart Mom Ideas for like over a month, right? So there is no fresh new blog post, no fresh new pins, yet I'm still getting the traffic. I'm still getting those impressions and everything up and up, right? So again, it's just why? Why would that be? Well, because Pinterest has looked at my profile and it has seen it as as the niche of parenting and motherhood content, right? So again, in Ready, Set, Vlog, Ready, Set, Blog for Traffic, these are all the theories and stuff that I go behind about how to create a profile just like this. Now, one of my newest profiles is my freelance writing profile. So I can see it's still growing. It's over a year old, but I always want to see my numbers. Are they going up? My link clicks, it's not that high, a, a couple hundred, you know, 50, 60. Um, well, look at my topic. I am talking about freelance writing. I'm talking about business stuff. It's not a very a big hot topic on Pinterest. Sure, there might be some some um, people that do well in the business niche, in the blogging niche, but I I haven't seen it, right? Parenting, motherhood, DIY, crafts, sewing, all those visual types of, of uh, niches will do well on Pinterest if you can market it right. So but I'm doing the best that I can. I know for a fact that I've gotten emails from people who have bought my course for freelance writing that they found me on Pinterest. So I do know that whatever traffic I am generating back to my blog on elnacane.com, that they are an engaged reader, that they sign up to my newsletter, that they go through my free course, they pick up my tripwire, and then they buy my comprehensive course, right? So I have created a funnel for that. So even though I'm not getting a lot of traffic, a lot of clicks back to my pins, I am still seeing an uptick in those people that are following me in my email list, right? It's not a lot, but again, I like Pinterest. I, I deem it as a, pro, a platform that I wanna use for my business, as well as YouTube. 
I'm starting to grow my YouTube channel and I'm finding that people are finding me on YouTube. So again, it for me, it's that whole brand building and um, showing that you can you can find my content on other platforms. Oh, hey, Ashley, I can see your name and I can see your comment. This is so exciting because usually in uh, groups, I can't see anything. Okay, it says your blog and website is my number one favorite. Love that we can learn from me. Oh, thank you so much. I'm glad you like it. <laughs> okay, so I'm just going on a tangent on this like myth and stuff. So again, be consistent, decide. Are you gonna create three pins a day? Create three pins a day for like ever. <laughs> Are you going to um, use Tailwind to be consistent? Then make sure you schedule those pins and be consistent on that. Try to engage on the platform as much as you can and see if that helps. Um, I, I know it does for, for my profiles. Okay, so let's go to some questions here. Uh, Bridget asks, how many personal boards do you recommend having? As many as you can. Oh, Ashley says, oh, how cool. No one has ever mentioned me before in the life. <laughs> That's great, Ashley. Um, okay, so sorry, you're looking at the, um, let's go to Twins Mommy. So if you need to start a blog, just head on to Twins Mommy and you can follow. I have a video and everything. So any new bloggers that want to get a blog and get on Pinterest, uh, use this blog post. It goes through everything and um, it's a very popular post. But let me just look at the question. Oh, you know what I can do? I can do this. There you go. You can see me <laughs> while I look at your question. Uh, Bridget asks, how many personal boards? I recommend to start with like 20 to 25. And then after that, you can start niching down. So for a while, I just had one pregnancy board and I put all my pregnancy pins in that board. But then I thought, well, you know, I want Pinterest to know that I really have a lot of pregnancy content. So I created like five other boards that were related to pregnancy. So like, I don't know, um, pregnant for the first time, uh, like new uh, tri each trimester, uh, trying to get pregnant, uh, lots of different topics around pregnancy. And so I did that for my, my main niche topics on Smart Mom Ideas. I did, I did that for, for parenting, for pregnancy, and for, I think, breastfeeding. Those are the ones that I opened up. Same thing with uh, Twins Mommy. I opened up uh, blogging. So I have blogging, blogger, blogging tips, blogger tips, make money blogging, um, biz, start a blog, uh, start a blog in business. I have a whole bunch of different types of topics around blogging tips, um, as well as SEO, um, making money and working at home. Like, so those are the big, uh, topics. So as far as your personal boards, I mean, you want to have a good chunk so that you can start building the brand on your profile so that Pinterest knows what your profile is about so that they can start recommending your pins, your profile to other pinners, right? Um, so I hope that helped, Bridget. Uh, Teresa, Carissa, how far apart frequently do you pin the same new pin to different boards for 24 hours, 48 hours? It's whatever I can do. It There is no set pattern for me personally. When I create new a new post with a new pin, I immediately send it to a relevant board, then to Tailwind. So Tailwind takes care of that. I send it to Tribes and that's it. Um, and then I move on to my other blogs. I move on to emails, I move on. And so then I might go back, look at my profile to see how is that pin performing? Do I need to create another pin? Do I need to uh, send it more love? All right, so you can do it that way, pin by pin, but it's not frequent for me. I just send it to Tailwind. I send it out there to the tribes for others to keep pinning my pin, right? That's the goal, right? You want to just get it out there and let your followers do the job for you, right? To get it out there. Um, oh, what about once it's been pinned to all relevant boards? How long do you wait before you pin again? Like I know Pinterest was saying something like, you know, you need to space your pins apart. Uh, you don't want to you don't want to spam your own boards with the same pin over and over again. I don't know. I haven't had any problems. I mean, let's see if we go to my smart mom ideas. Where am I? Let's just see because like I don't know what Tailwind does and I don't know how often my boards get fresh content. Because again, I'm not on this platform, on Smart Mom ID is very often. So let's look at my boards. 
Let's pick a board and see what it looks like. Post-pregnancy. Okay. So here's a pin and here's a pin that's the same. Here's this pin and that pin is the same. Uh, this pin and that pin's the same. So, I mean, it's not like, I'm not totally spamming my own board, but you can see that this pin here has been on this board for like, it's all the time. But no, I have other people's pins here. So, I mean, yeah, I when I send it to Tailwind, I mean, I think it does a good job of putting my pins to the right boards. I mean, I personally wouldn't use Tailwind if you don't have a lot of boards to send your pins to. If you only have 10 boards, then I would only use Tailwind to schedule it for like five times a day because you don't want to spam your boards, right? So have enough boards so that you can send your pins multiple times a day every day, right? And that takes time. So I wouldn't use Tailwind right off the bat. I would have a good profile with a lot of boards, get on some group boards and see if that wor works. I mean, again, some people say they work, they're deprioritizing group boards. Well, I haven't seen that. I haven't seen that. Oh, you can't even see, sorry. Here, <laughs> what am I saying? I'm saying, if you look at the board, you can see that this pin has been um, scheduled over and over, but there are some spaces here. And I do, um, you know, I put some other people's, it's not just my own pins. I have third party pins all here too as well. So you can see, I did a little stint of manual pinning right there. And I pinned relevant pins to tell Pinterest, this is a post-pregnancy board. And I'm gonna put some pins here. And what's so nice is that Pinterest, even once it figures that out from the name of your board or whatever, it gives you more ideas. So it's like super easy to pin relevant content on your board, right? And you can look and see which ones is relevant to my board. Okay, that's about post-pregnancy. There's childbirth, labor. Okay. Labor pain, so I can put a couple of those, labor, things like that, if I wanted to. All right. Um... Amara, how to join other boards on Pinterest? Thanks. It's going to be difficult to, to join boards on Pinterest. I mean, um, you can try finding them on Pinterest and then joining them or go to Facebook. Facebook might have Pinterest marketing Facebook groups where they will share that content. But um, like for me, I do have Pinterest boards, but I'm not letting anyone in at the moment right now just because I have enough people. Um, but if you have an engaged profile, you will get asked to join boards. And I get that all the time now. So um, that that's another way too. Mary, hi there. Hey, Mary, Mari. Ashley, do you use Canva to create your pins? I really like that, that program, but man, it is a process to create and post every single thing you blog about. Yeah, I, I use Canva sometimes, but I only mostly, <laughs> only mostly use uh, Photoshop. So Photoshop is for me, my, my way of creating pins. I can show you quickly. Oh, I don't know if I can. I have like, can you see that? Am I showing that on the screen? Photoshop opening up? It's the same process for me on Canva, um, doing it in Photoshop. But um, oh my goodness, this is slowing everything down. Okay, can you see what I'm doing? Oh, I can't show you on Photoshop. Photoshop is being real finicky right now because it just closed on me. All right. But anyways, um, let's try Canva then. Um, I think in Canva, there are some bloggers here that do a really good job, like showing like how to do it multiple times and stuff. So like with Canva, I like to use templates and I actually use them mostly for uh, YouTube, but, um, you can see here. So these are all my YouTube graphics. Um, 
So here's a pin that I created right here, list building pin. If you can see. So I just use um, the the thousand by fifteen hundred or six hundred by nine hundred, or you can use the template in um, tail in Canva, and then create your pin. And all you got to do, you can also just plus here and add a new page and just create create your pins, like a whole bunch of pins that way. And then what I would do is I would upload them to uh, to uh, Pinterest. But they have a lot of little free, like you can just use like this one. Like I'm just going to use uh, this template, change the color, change the font, change the background, right? So the background, I'm going to use a different A different photo and like space it out position it back and do, you know, do something like that. And then I can change the color to like match my, the gold of it. And so you can do a quick, and I did for a while when, again, when I was struggling with my hand, this is what was working for me. I can quickly just use a template, get the pins out there. And I think I put that in my, in my email lists, like I told everyone about that. Um, so let's go to my, my blogging, my Twins Mommy Pinterest profile is, again, it took a ding. Um, wow, it took another thing. Oh, well. I'm not chasing Pinterest too much on Twins Mommy because I am getting Google traffic now. So um, so let me see. Let's look at the pins for the ones that I created on Canva. Let's see how they're performing. I can just do a quick, just quickly to see like the metrics underneath the pins. This one I created right here. See, there is the pin that I created using that template. And so it got like, this one pin got six clicks back. That's not bad. I mean, I don't get high numbers on my my um, pins for blogging, like 12. There's only a couple that I get like 100 or something clicks back because it's like a really popular pin. Um, but yeah, I use that. There's a couple other ones. I sent them out, but again, I don't see them anymore now because they're out in, on Pinterest right now. Do, 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 do. But see, like I created this in Photoshop and this is one of my popular pins and it already has a hundred clicks back. So. Um, so again, there's only a couple of pins that I have that, that get the, the clicks back. I don't see the other pins that I created. Okay, I'm not gonna bore you, just me scrolling my, my profile here. <laughs> so let's just get to the questions. Okay. So Bridget, I hope that answered with your personal board. Uh, and then how far apart? Okay, how do you get the most keywords in, in like most bang for your buck? Like for your pins? Honestly, right now when I set my pins on on Pinterest, I just have set keywords that I, I know. Um, so like when I write my description on Pinterest, I'm using it to, to sync to the relevant boards that I want it to go on, okay? That's how I'm using my keywords. And then I use hashtags for other relevant keywords. Although I don't think hashtags are really big on Pinterest still, yet I like to put them in because they're just fun. Um, I do have a blog post actually on Twins Mommy about SEO on Pinterest. Let's see what I say. SEO writing and Pinterest topics for your blog. I think I linked to a Pinterest thing. Let's see. No, I talk about SEO writing. Keywords everywhere. 
Okay. No, I don't. There's a there's also a little guide that you can use for all the basic topics that Pinterest are are using for the year. I have it in one of the blog posts here. I just have tips here. Yeah. But again, I'm not like super like on the ball with the keywords thing. Um yeah. Again, I'm using Pinterest so that people can look at my pins and want to save. Again, Pinterest is looking at those metrics. I think they're really looking at the engagement for like saving your pin is like, like YouTube looks at uh, watch time. Pinterest looks at save, saving your pins. Like it really looks at that and where it's placed so that it, it knows the board that it's saved to so that it starts figuring out what your pin is about kind of thing. So that's the way I use Pinterest. Um, let's look here. How many images do you need for one post and how do you make them all similar while different enough? You don't have to make your pins cohesive. They can be completely different from each other, completely different branding if you want. That's another way you can get new viewers if it appeals to a certain audience. Um, sometimes I like to make my pins all black and all green and all blue and just like make it all different. Uh, use different fonts, use black font instead of my white font that I use constantly. Um, use muted colors versus bright colors. Play around to see what is going to attract pinners to your content. Um, I do like to create two pins when I create a new blog post, but if you've noticed on my blog, my most recent post or two only has like one, I think only one blog, one pin, because again, my hand, I'm saving that. So I only have the one pin, but I'm trying to do two pins for each new blog post. And then later on, I will create alternate pins based on how it's performing on Pinterest. How many images do you need for one post and how do you make them all similar? Oh, I answered that. Okay. Um, when looking at analytics, what numbers should be striving for during the first few months of using Pinterest and the best way to achieve those results? I mean, you do want to look at the link clicks, as I showed you in the beginning here. Um, sorry, let's look at Smart Mom Ideas. Everyone looks at impressions, and impression is a big number too. It's an important number. I honestly feel I would not have gotten my job on Walmart if they did not look at my impression number on Pinterest and my all my analytics that they can visually see on social media. Those numbers that people can visually see can help with uh, with branding, um, sorry, with sponsored content, and it helped me gain a writing gig that way too. So it is an important number, but you do have to realize that people that don't know Pinterest, all they see is, wow, a million? They, they honestly think you're getting a million people to your, to your profile and to your blog. They see that as an influencer kind of thing. I'm fine with that. <laughs> Honestly, they don't need to know the intricacy of using Pinterest marketing and what those numbers mean. Again, people look at subscribers on YouTube. They look at the likes or the followers on Instagram. That's all they're seeing, right? It's just a number, right? So you don't have to strive for a big number, but you do want to look at your uh, impressions versus link clicks. Is it working? So you can now see here, if I can get this to work, of course not because everything is super slow when I'm video recording. Let's try again. But anyways, you can you can look at oh, here. Okay. Link clicks. I'm assuming are the link clicks to your site. You can see how am I performing? Well, it looks like I'm getting more impressions than than clicks back to my site, but I'm it's still good numbers here, you know, a thousand uh, link clicks. And then you can also look here, um, if you look at link clicks of my top pins, you can see I'm getting 5,000, 3,000. And these are just regular, they're not promoted pins at all. Like I'm getting thousands of clicks in, well, let's look in the past 30 days. <laughs> so in the last 30 days, 234 right here, right? So that's a more accurate thing. This is total. I like to look at total just to see these are my top pins. But in the last 30 days, it's not bad. Um, so yeah, you can look at these 
um, to see how are your impressions versus your clicks performing, you can look at, let's look at save rate. So how many people are saving my pins versus just looking at my pins? You can see, are people saving my pins? All right, you can see a lot of things. Oh, that's link clicks versus saving. So people are saving, but they're not linking or they're not clicking back as often, right? There's a big gap in between. That's fine. At least they're saving it to their board. At least Pinterest knows, okay, that person saved my, my pin to a pregnancy board. It's gonna deem my pin pregnancy and it's hopefully gonna share it more, right? So these are all things that you can look at your metrics on Pinterest. But again, I'm I'm not like, my main strategy now isn't Pinterest, it's SEO, right? Because as your blog grows, as your your marketing strategies grow, you're going to start getting love from Google because you have an established blog. And that traffic is, a, is long term, mostly long term. It doesn't mean that it's going to not be. There's tons of blogs that get hit with each algorithm update that, that Google gives you. I mean, fortunately, this last update, Bert, actually bumped me up in, in the rankings. So I'm very fortunate of that because that update relies on valuable content that's niched down. And that's exactly what I provide on elnacane.com, right? I don't provide that on Twins Mommy. I provide variety. <laughs> so um, I need to work hard on trying to really niche down on a topic. But yeah, so I'm not like, you know, reading every kind of Pinterest marketing uh, post out there. I'm just trying to maintain so I can get a good amount of traffic. Now I can look at my Google Analytics, which I haven't, to see the actual numbers of how many people are coming to my my blog. I know for a fact that my my uh, freelance writing one um, is not. I, I'm getting less, like social for my freelance writing site is, is small. It's like less than 5% because I'm getting massive SEO traffic. But if I can tap into YouTube and tap into Pinterest, well, then that's going to help me, right? There's a lot of blogs out there, especially a lot of um, some of my clients that I've worked with only get SEO traffic and they're worried about that. They want to tap into Instagram. They want to tap into Pinterest marketing stuff, right? Because they know that even though SEO is long term, they still need to diversify their traffic sources. It's that important for these big sites because they don't know what's going to happen with Google. They don't know if they're going to only pump out the big industries, you know, only show Amazon and only show Walmart stuff and only show big, big brands and push all the bloggers and small entrepreneurs to page 10. That could happen, right? You need to rely on other sources and that's where Pinterest and YouTube come in. And as a new blogger, you can get a foot on that, right? All right, sorry, I'm just going off on this stuff. Like it's just a passion topic of mine. Okay, um, I think I've answered those questions. I love your Pinterest graphics. What software do you use? I, I use Photo. Okay, I already answered that. All right, let's see some questions here. I do have a question about multiple pins. Do I have to add all of the pin photos to my blog post? I've created three pin images for every new blog post this year, and I just feel like they would look too much if I included them all in my post. You definitely can put all of your pins in your post. Um, I know believe I know Kristen of Believe in a Budget used to do that. I don't know if she still does that. And I think Carly of Mommy on Purpose, at the end of her blog post, she like, puts like lots of pins underneath. You can totally do that if you want. I don't know if, they're, if that's better than um, what I do. I upload any alternate pins just to the Pinterest platform. So if we go to Pinterest, there's this, oh, sorry. If we go to Pinterest, there's this little plus. I use this all the time. And I just create my pin using Pinterest. Again, I personally feel Pinterest wants you to use their, their platform. They want you to use it. So I use it constantly to create any alternate pins. I just put them here. I don't put them on my blog post anymore. I put two blog pins on my blog, two pins on my blog, and then the rest alternate, I just, I just put them here. And, um, all those pins, a lot of the alternate pins are, um, getting a lot of clickbacks, right? So again, I don't think it really matters. That's just my personal belief, my personal belief. Um, so I wouldn't worry too much about that. Ashley, okay, that's what I'm doing. Just wanted to make sure. Okay, great. Hey, Rebecca. All right, everyone. I think those are all the questions. If you guys have any other questions, if you want me to talk more about uh, my profiles or pin design, let me know. I was going to show you 
quickly how I create a pin in Photoshop that's very similar to Canva. I showed you quickly using Canva, but I don't know if anyone here uses Photoshop. But um, Oh, okay. I can't do it right now. I don't know why. That's weird. Okay. Anyways, thank you for joining me. Thank you for asking your questions. Um, like I said, if you want more help with Pinterest marketing, SEO writing, and, and gaining ranking potential, enroll in Ready, Set, Blog for Traffic. Um, I am gearing up to update it this year with the new Pinterest platform, but a lot of the, the strategies I use are still relevant to using Pinterest in general. I just show you an outdated um, user platform is pretty much only that's it. And then I've updated the SEO stuff that's relevant and all that stuff that's been happening last year too. All right. So, um, I personally feel that's, that's, those are the strategies that I've used to, to grow a lot of my blogs and, and my business as well. All right, everyone. Um, oh, one more question. I also wanted to know if I should link my blog post images to my main board to make it easier for people to save my pins. I wanted to link my blog post pin images to my main board. Oh, like, so you have a main um, blog board. So I had, I would have a twins mommy board on Pinterest. You can, but again, Pinterest is looking at the relevant board to that. That's not relevant to your pin. If your pin's about uh, DIY crafts and you pin it to your blog name board, Pinterest is going to get confused. So I would first pin it to a relevant board. That's the, that the pin is about before you, you go and pump it to your main um, branding blog board on Pinterest. I would do that. All right, everyone. Thanks for joining me. Um, any more questions, just pop them in and hopefully I can answer them or there's other people in here that know Pinterest too. So you can, um, that you can answer. I know Cassie is doing awesome um, on Pinterest and she did a live in this about um, sponsored stuff. So make sure to check the videos in this group. There's a lot of videos that I see topics in this group about SEO, writing, making money, starting a blog, all that stuff is, there's lots of videos in this group. So check those out. All right. Bye everyone.